For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. As the Alabama Riverfront brawl investigation continues, more charges and arrests continue to be handed out, just like the Montgomery police stated. After we reported that a woman, Mary Todd, was the fourth individual arrested in charge due to her involvement with the Alabama Riverfront brawl, a fifth person, Reggie Ray, turned himself in to local authorities over the weekend. Now, Ray was the man allegedly seen striking people with a folding chair, including a white woman. Even though he was charged with disorderly conduct and brought in on Friday, August the 11th, it looks like Ray is out of jail after Yahoo News reported that he posted bail. He was seen leaving the Montgomery Municipal Jail that same evening. Others from the brawl that were brought in and charged last week were Richard Roberts, Alan Todd, and Zachary Shipman for third-degree assault charges. Also, according to the Yahoo News, civil rights attorney Lee Merritt is representing multiple people from the brawl, including Ray. He shared this news via Instagram on Saturday morning. The post read, as of early this morning, each of our clients who faced arrest as a result of their alleged involvement in the incident at the Montgomery Riverfront has been released from jail. The criminal charges involved amount to no more than misdemeanors if outright dismissal is not warranted. The community response to recovery fund has raised $156,172 thus far. A team of attorneys, investigators, and professional service providers are working to ensure their needs are met. Now, Mayor would add a caption on the post that read, Mr. Reggie Ray is out. He is in good spirits. He got a speeding ticket on the way home, but he is relieved to discover the community showed up for him and others in such a strong way. Thank you. According to the Montgomery Police Department, in a statement that was sent to ABC News, Merritt said, Mr. Ray was involuntarily roped into the disorderly conduct initiated by a violent white mob. Mr. Ray will continue to participate with the ongoing investigation concerning the same and is committed to being forthcoming about his limited role in the brawl. When it comes to the defense strategy of Ray's team, it looks like this incident could possibly fall under the defense of others' law. So the doctrine in this law states, any person witnessing a violent assault upon the person of another may lawfully aid the person being assaulted by assisting that person's defense. The force exerted upon the attacker or attackers by the person witnessing the assault may be that degree of force which the assaulted person is allowed to assert in defending himself. Now, Lee Merritt will repost something that further explains this by lawyer Courtney Walters. Let's take a look. I'm sure by now everyone has seen the footage from the Alabama brawl. So far, charges have been brought against four people involved. And there are questions online about why charges haven't been brought against everyone involved. Chances are it's because of something called defense of a third party, or as we call it in Florida, defense of others. In Florida, defense of others is an affirmative defense that can be used in court. What it basically says is that an otherwise unlawful violent act can be justified so long as we can show that it was reasonably necessary to protect a third party from an aggressor. It's likely that after seeing the video footage of the other people involved that may have been throwing chairs and things of that nature, they came to the conclusion that they were just defending Captain Damian Pickett. If you've been charged with a violent crime and you believe you were acting in defense of a third party, look no further. Don't argue with the cops, just take it to court. In connection to Ray's release, it has also been reported that more than $260,000 has been collected through a GoFundMe that was set up by Merritt. Now, this is all according to Newsweek and the post on the GoFundMe page would read, funds raised here will be used to offset the cost of certain damages incurred by my clients and others involved in responding to the chaos at the riverfront. These damages include, but are not limited to, medical bills, lost wages, earnings, professional services, travel, lodging, and expenses. When it was announced that Ray had been released, people were excited, especially those that knew him expressed their gratitude. A family member, Ramisha Ray, said, Look at Uncle Reggie and Dad, his brother. We love you, Uncle. You're our hero. Ray has proven himself not to just be a hero to his family, but also to the black community. Ray's chair swing has become one of the most memorable moments of the Riverfront Brawl. Fans online couldn't help but create sketches and skits featuring their own folding chairs as a tribute to the iconic moment. Now, while we have a history of making timeless memes, I think it's equally important to know the legalities. So I have with us our very own You Be The Judge analyst, Joya, joining me to talk more about the other side of things. 
Joya, first and foremost, thank you again for joining me. You know, people are making memes and making fun of it, but I think it's also important for us to understand what's happening on the back end. So from your point of view, can you tell me what, what are you seeing here? Symphony, symphony, symphony. So I, I just want to start by saying personally, before we get into the legalities, I didn't see a chairman. I, di I didn't see a chairman. I think other people saw <laughs> other people saw an individual with a chair. But just for the record, for me, I did not see one personally, someone holding it personally. You know, we all were hoping and praying that our uncle Reggie Gray wouldn't be identified, arrested and or charged in the incidents with the brawl. But he indeed was. And sometimes I think, did our memes, did our attention amplify him being identified in this incident? Because I even saw chair earrings. I saw people with a chair tattoo and the date that the event happened. But I will say with Lee Merritt, he made calls on those who were recording from different angles to bring forth evidence to support some type of self-defense law. Now you commented on the law of the defense of others. I work in policy law, so I haven't seen this law used quite frequently, but if it is, what I do pose to our audience is that it could be used on both sides. We have to think about that. What we need to also talk about is if this incident was racially motivated at all. I believe so, some others don't. Um, in a state like Alabama that has a historical background of white vigilante mob violence, I was just thinking, did those white men actually think that they could get away with something like that? I am waiting diligently and um, trusting that the police officers will do their job, even though I don't always believe in the integrity of our criminal legal system. I just hope with a Black mayor like Mayor Stephen Reed and also with uh, several police officers of color that this will be handled in a manner that is fair for all sides, but particularly for Black people, because that was a moment for us, Symphony. <laughs> Do you yeah, agree? You know, it's, it's definitely been a moment. And, I, and again, too, I don't think it's going to end anytime soon, because as you mentioned, of course, people are there. Uh, they have the earrings. I think the stocks of, of chairs have gone up and all these things. But one thing I am noticing, Joy, and especially as we're reporting here, just a lot of people also, you know, wanting Reggie Ray to get off, but also to a lot of people happy about the way that certain outlets are reporting on this. Now, Lee Merritt would mention, you know, um, you know, there being a white mob there. I love your thoughts in seeing that. Is that what you thought as well? You know, seeing a white mob and, you know, thugs, things that typically would be classified if they were a different race. What were your thoughts when you saw it? Did you have that mentality as well? Absolutely. I mean, there's no denying. There's been people commenting commenting on, is it street justice that we need to lean into? Or do we, in fact, need to believe in our criminal justice system, which has historically disenfranchised Black people? Do we want to lean into that? That's something that we have to ask ourselves. Now, I will say, it was multi-generational at that doc. You know, it was a moment for everybody. We had young people. We had a 16-year-old. We had older individuals, most more seasoned individuals. So it was a moment. And I'm not going to take away from that just because now we're dealing with the legalities of the issue. For me, I am watching like everybody else, frame by frame, track by track. I hope that Lee Merritt is able to get some type of evidence to support that Mr. Gray was indeed validated in his actions there, you know, and even if not, you know, that's something that we can think about when it is a incident involving white people and black people in Alabama, in the deep South, we can't help but to go back and think about our ancestors and what they went through. And I even think that it was a couple of hours before that incident, I heard that it was some women that went by the dock and they pay homage to the ancestors before that incident happened. So there was some energy already harvesting and going on there. So I will say, you know, I am tracking. It is way too early to tell because from my understanding that the Montgomery police are still calling on more people to be identified on both sides. But again, there were multiple people videoing 
And yeah. back in the day, when it came to our word against white people at times, it was often white people's word that was taken. So I just hope and pray, and anybody who's watching this, that uh, recorded the incident and if there's some evidence to support that uh, Mr. Gray's actions were validated, I pray that they come forth. Absolutely, too. And, and I do hope, too, that we see the, the classification, if, that, if that's the proper term, of this turnaround where they're, they're saying right now it's not considered a hate crime. But, you know, we've heard stories of people coming out and say, hey, well, you heard certain words and saw certain things. Um, and I want to read, um, I'm going to reread what Lee Merritt said, but I also want to add this because when I saw it, I was like, man, there's so much truth behind here. So this was one of his statements. He said, the city of Montgomery, Alabama employees of the Harriet II Riverboat who were forced to defend against a brutal and ongoing assault by an unrestrained white mob against a fellow state agent must enjoy the full support of the state. He would then go on to say that the city of Montgomery, um, they're of course taking a plan to consider everything happened on August the 5th, but he said the law requires that individuals operating under the color of state authority should enjoy what some might call a qualified immunity. So just hoping, so that that's another piece that can be added to this as well. Let's let's use it to the full extent of the law. And I think we were talking offline. We need to use the full extent of law for these people because they deserve it. Right. And I'm so glad you brought up qualified immunity because qualified immunity is what Trump was extending to police officers that were being militarized during the 2020 uprisings of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, qualified immunity to police that were beating protesters for saying we simply do not agree with the actions of some police departments. So I do pray. Qualified immunity is extended. And like I said before, working in policy law, that is something that enters into my realm, into my world, for us to actually change the policies that will be applicable, applicable to defend those actions that happen at the broad in the future. And in some actions, um, in some cases with policy, it can be retroactive. So I will say we were all, you know, like it's the right, we were, we were voting for everybody black at that moment. And we can't say, that is race related right now in the media or in a nice way, but it was race related. Because Absolutely. I truly yeah. believe that the dock worker, if the races were swapped, it would have been a completely different story. Yeah, now I'll reread what Lee Mayer said. He said, Mr. Ray was involuntary roped into the disorderly conduct initiated by a violent white mob. Mr. Ray will continue to participate with the ongoing investigation concerning the same and is committed to being forthcoming about his limited role in the brawl. So I think as we will continue to see this roll out, both the case itself, but also with Reggie Ray, um, you know, Lee Merritt makes it clear that they're going to make sure that they're heavily involved and that it's going to be very forthcoming. And I think that's something to applaud as well. So Right. And also, I want to read a tweet. This is the court of public opinion. Um, someone says, if any any charges are filed against the folding chair hero in Montgomery, Montgomery is going to be in trouble. That man was acting in self-defense of others, something these rednecks and cops seem to understand perfectly well when the roles are reversed. So just when I was talking about it, it seems like when we abide by the rules, the rules are changed. So I am rooting <laughs> for Chairman Aquaman. Hey, and, and, and rooting for justice, right? You're, you're rooting for justice because that... Yeah, because when we're looking at the law, we're not going based on opinions and emotions. This is the law that was created. This is what, you know, you're, th this is what the people stated or created. So, hey, we're just. I trust, I trust Lee Merritt and his team and, and the others to be able to deliver uh, the correct defense in the courts. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Joy, for joining me as always. Thank you for the facts and also just providing uh, both sides on both sides to, to this case. So thank you. Now, regardless of how you feel about the part that the chair played in the brawl, it did bring attention to a history fact that I think is worth knowing, especially because I've been seeing a lot of misinformation, the wrong picture with the right name, but I'm here to clear it up. On March 10th, 1911, Nathaniel Alexander of Lynchburg, Virginia, the purpose of my invention is to furnish a chair with a book rest or support that would be immediately placed in position when the seat of the chair is lowered. The rest or support, otherwise being compactly held upon the back of the chair, 
whereby it will not interfere with persons passing back and forth between the chairs. So while this isn't the chair that we see today, nor is it the chair used in the Riverfront Brawl, I do think it's important to know the history of our people. On July 4th, 1911, the official patent was recognized. So for all my people looking for a reason to celebrate the 4th of July, you have Mr. Nathaniel Alexander to thank. And in the words of Shirley Chisholm, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. But what do you guys think about Reggie Ray's arrest and release? Let us know in the comments below. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson.